there's like to go family. Before we begin, we would like to thank you for your everlasting support. Our mission is to help you gain a deeper understanding of yourself and others in a fun and engaging way. And we hope we've been able to help you in your times of need. Now, let's begin. One of the universal challenges of being human is not knowing what to say to someone who's struggling, especially when it comes to heavy conversations. Talking to someone who's in pain can be difficult to navigate, whether they've specifically reached out to you for support or not. Sometimes emotions come up suddenly and you may find yourself having a conversation neither of you expected. While these examples may not work for everyone, nor should they be used in place of professional advice, we hope they can guide supportive communication when it's needed. With that said, here are six things to say when someone's in pain. One, you have my attention. It can be frustrating when you're trying your best to reach out, but it feels like you're not being heard. This simple sentence can let the person you're speaking with know that you are listening to them and value what they feel and say. It lets them know that they have the time and space to be truthful and voice their needs, whatever they might be. Two, what is your biggest concern right now? Emotions can be messy and unclear. So if you're unsure what's wrong or how you can help, don't be afraid to ask questions. The more you know, the more you can do to support them. It's possible that thinking out loud may help them sort through their emotions and thoughts, but it's just as possible that asking questions might overwhelm them when they're already in pain. If they're unable to answer, simply be there with them, be patient, and keep an open heart and mind. Three, I'm here to listen. As much as you may want to jump in and help, sometimes the best thing to do is to listen. According to a 2007 study conducted at UCLA, talking about feelings can disrupt the activity of the amygdala, the part of the brain responsible for fear, and the fight or flight response. This is why, over time, talking about your problems or emotions help make them feel like less of a big deal. And it's why talking can be one of the most productive things you can do for your mental health. Number four, what do you need right now? Sometimes it's okay to let the person who needs support take the lead. On occasion, those close to you know what might help or how to help better than yourself. This could be because the person is distant from the situation and has a more candid understanding of it, which allows them to make a more appropriate decision. Despite this, it's important to remember that everyone has their own idea of what support or comfort looks like, and that sometimes it's better to seek help from a professional. Don't feel frustrated if your strategies aren't connecting as well as you thought. Five, do you want to talk about it? When someone reaches out, they don't always wanna talk. Sometimes it's because they don't feel ready or they'd rather spend their energy elsewhere. This question doesn't put any pressure on them. It gives you a chance to offer support, but also lets the person involved do what they feel most comfortable with. They can give a simple yes or no. Remember, talking isn't the only way to be there for someone. A little company can go a long way. And six, I wanna understand this more so I can help. When someone's in pain, it's especially important to be honest with them if you don't understand the situation or aren't able to help. This will save both of you from spending time and energy on something that won't be helpful to either of you. It's okay to let them know if you can't help, even if they reached out to you, since your mental health is important also. But sometimes a simple explanation is all that's needed to get everyone on the same page. It never hurts to ask. There are many different ways you can offer support to someone when they're struggling. Most, if not all of us, have been on both sides of a conversation. And sometimes we struggle with offering support to our loved ones. We hope that these suggestions help you the next time you're helping your loved one through pain. We would also like to note that some situations are better when addressed by a professional and to make the call most appropriate to the situation. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.